Here we have two landscape paintings that depict the commerce and industry of the times they were painted. This painting is by Jan Bruegel the Elder and was painted in 1612. This painting is by Camille Pizarro and was painted in 1873. Obviously, these two paintings are depicting very different periods of time. We also see similar differences in the materials and techniques that the artists used to paint them. Scientists at the IMA identified ultramarine blue in the skies of both of these paintings. However, they contain different versions of this pigment. The Bruegel contains natural ultramarine, which was made from a beautiful blue mineral that would have come all the way from Afghanistan and was thus very expensive. The Bizarro, on the other hand, contains a newly available synthetic ultramarine. Just as both artists used ultramarine in the sky, they also used copper containing green pigments in the foliage. This comparison can be seen in the elemental maps, showing the location of copper in each painting. You've probably seen how oxidized copper turns green, like on the Statue of Liberty. That's what Bruegel was using to paint. But these pigments often discolored and it was hard to get a really bright green pigment. Luckily for Pizarro, by the time he was painting, there were new green pigments available. In his landscape, he used emerald green, which is a beautiful, vibrant green that is composed of arsenic and copper. During the 19th century, advances in industry and chemistry allowed the expansion of the artist's pigment palette. In fact, colormen were a big part of advancing chemistry because they wanted new colors to sell. Comparisons of similar compositional elements show the different ways that the artist painted. Bruegel painted in the studio, slowly building up each layer of paint with rich glazes and letting the paint dry in between. Bruegel also had a workshop of assistants who could work on numerous paintings at once. Pizarro painted outside, or en plein air, in a more immediate way with rich, colorful brush strokes. He didn't let the paint dry before adding another layer, so we see what's called a wet-in-wet -wet technique. Both artists were masters of their age, but the materials available to them influenced the way they approached their craft. 